so in the last video we talked about limits to the population growth and we talked about how populations can increase and decrease sometimes throughout time because of these things now I want to talk about some examples of fluctuations that occur within the population across time now one example that of population dynamics that is very 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 common is the idea of the s curve or the logistic growth pattern Notice that these two populations that they did an experiment here, one is this tiny microscopic animal that we call a daphnia, and the other one is this here, the paramecium. Now, we already talked about this before, but it's the idea that initially populations will tend to grow very slowly because there's less available mates and less available diversity. And this is called the alley effect. Now, you may also notice there's actually less of an alley effect in the population of the paramecium because the paramecium doesn't reproduce sexually as much so this means that it doesn't have the limitation on, on early on the population size of having to have trouble finding mates so the alley effect in paramecium is going to be smaller than it is on the on the daphnia where in the beginning it's difficult to find mates now regardless how the goals and vary in the beginning either population would eventually grow at what it seems to be their intrinsic rate which is like they're growing as fast as they can look the paramecium actually seems to go faster since they all they have to do is a division and the daphnia those the slope is a little bit less but still it grows pretty fast but this seems to actually slow down after a while as they reach close to what's called the carrying capacity. Because unlike exponential growth, when the population can continue to grow as fast as they naturally can grow, if you have limited resources, which is the case of any S-curve, the population will be limited and won't be able to grow uh, exponentially indefinitely. But it will actually slow down as it approaches the carrying capacity. Now notice that the paramecium population very closely match the growth of the S curve, meaning that as they approach their, 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 their carrying capacity, their numbers slow down substantially. Now, the Daphne population, because they can have thousands of eggs all at once, instead of just duplicating like the paramecium does, what happens with them is that they made too many eggs at this point here. They, so they thought everything was good, and they made so many eggs, that means their populations exploded. But all of these extra Daphnis then had nothing to eat, so they crashed down and went back down below the carrying capacity. So you see, what will happen sometimes is that organisms will have too many offspring because they will have this burst of reproduction, and then the population will grow like crazy. But then, as the populations die off because they are starving, you go back in the carrying capacity. So that's why you see these two different curves on these different different populations. One, that sexual reproduction can sometimes cause the the explosion of the numbers uh, uh, to go way beyond the carrying capacity. But one way or the other, the general pattern is that the populations will start slowly because of the alley effect. They will pick up very fast and then they will reach the carrying capacity one way or the other and they will kind of stay around that line because of that. Now, that remember the concept that we talked about last video, that this carrying capacity can change, that this carrying capacity can go up if there's more productivity or down if there's more limiting factors like competition, predation, parasitism, intrinsic factors, or natural disasters and habitat destruction or things like that. So that is the S-curve and it's a very, very common uh, type of pattern that you will see in populations.